Okay, welcome to the practice uh, layout, practice drilling, practice countersinking. And so when you get in, you're going to have two pieces of metal in front of your desk. And so what I've done is I've quickly laid out some grid lines for us to do some drilling. And we've got a second piece to give the, the two, the build up, a little bit more strength. So the first thing I'd like you to do is get your one piece of metal, put it on top of the other, get them all nice and squared up, and then go into your toolbox and get one of these guys called a Clico clamp. And so what we're going to do is we're going to square these guys up perfectly, as perfectly as we can. Okay, and then we're going to pop in a couple of the Clico clamps. Okay, and what that's going to do is that's going to lock our pieces of metal, that looks good, pieces of metal, so that when we do our first drilling, we're holding the metal just the way we want it. You know what, I'm going to use maybe, I've got two of the big guys, I'm going to use two of the little guys maybe instead here. Okay, so get rid of that guy. We're going to put two of these guys, and again, it doesn't really matter, as long as I've got a good grip and we're holding stuff solid, okay? Now, one of the first things, of course, that we want to do, safety glasses. So we're going to put on safety glasses and we're going to use those always to take care, make sure that our, uh, we don't run the risk of getting anything in our eyes. I've had that experience and it's not a happy one. I'm going to go into my little box of goodies here and I'm going to look for my two smallest drill bits. Okay, well, there's a little guy there and there's another little guy there. So I'm going to put those here and I'm going to see, and there is absolutely no way to tell which one's which. So I'm going to go with the one that looks ever so micro smaller. So first thing I'm going to do is I want to drill some holes in here. So what I've got to do is I've got to put a drill into, uh, into a drill chuck. So this assembly here is our drill chuck. Two types of drill chucks. There's going to be the ones that are keyed or have a um, system here where we need a chuck key to rotate the center uh, claws to bring them out uh, so that we can grab onto our little drill bit and then tighten them using the the chuck key in the chuck. That's one type. A lot of the drills are like that. The other type, which I kind of like, is the keyless chuck. And so this guy, all I got to do is break, hold the base and spin the top. Now that I've opened that up, I'm going to spin this and bring the little claws out a little farther. I'm going to tighten it up just with my thumb and then again grab and squeeze like that. Okay so I've got my drill bit in my drill chuck. Now what I got to do is I've got to get an air supply so I'm just going to quickly plug in here. Hopefully this has got air. No, it doesn't so I'm going to make sure I've got air available. Okay and so I'm going to plug my air line into the base of my drill. Okay, give it a good push. You should hear the, the little locks in there lock and we're in good shape. Okay, so once we do that, we're pretty much ready to go. Whenever we drill, we're always gonna use the smallest drill bit that we can because what's gonna happen is um, we're gonna try and as best we can end up with the hole perfectly centered on that crosshair. And if you have a great big drill, it's super hard to see where that drill bit is sitting as it moves into that, uh, that crosshair. And so we want something where we can see exactly where we're going. Uh, and so the smallest drill bit is always a good choice. Then what we'll do is we'll bring the, the holes up to the size that we need, okay? So what I'm gonna do whenever I'm drilling is I'm going to basically just gently place my drill bit down pretty close to where I want it to be. Now. The other big thing I want to make sure is that I'm drilling straight. If I'm drilling on an angle like that, that's not very good. Or if I, you know, if I end up this way, it's not very good either. We've got to end up with that drill going in square. So what I usually do is I, I kind of look at it this direction, and then I also look at it from this direction. That way I'm sure that I'm, I'm good in the, the up and down direction and in the side to side, and I'm square. And then quite often what I'll do is I usually put a thumb or something on the edge of the drill just to kind of help keep it where I know is square. Okay, so squareness, very important. Now the next thing that I want to do is I'm not just going to go for it and drill crazy. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a quick little zip and I want to see where the center of that drill bit is going in. Okay, so just a quick little zip. 
right? And I can see the drill has started and it's, that's actually pretty good. It's very, very close to where I want it to be. So what I'm gonna do is again, make sure I'm kind of square. Give it another little, couple more little shots. Okay, I've actually brought it up just a hair, which isn't what I wanted to do, but that's okay. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring, again, make sure that's nice and square. Once I know that the hole's going where I want it to be, I can just put light pressure on the drill motor and just let the drill bit do its, its thing while it cuts through the material. So that ended up pretty close, not too bad. Now, uh, one of the other things I forgot to say is whenever we're drilling, always make sure that we are drilling on a drilling board. I've just cut some brand new fresh ones, which is really nice, but always drill on top of a drilling board. Don't drill on the countertop because even though we've had drilling boards, our countertops are starting to look like Swiss cheese. So we always, always put our projects, whatever we're drilling, on a drilling board so we protect the, the top surface of the uh, uh, counter, right? Okay, so I've drilled one hole and I'm relatively happy. So whenever I drill a hole, the first thing that I'm always going to do is I'm going to put one of these Clecos in. And so you can see the Cleco, it thins out, I can push it through the hole and then as it comes back up, it flares out, grabbing the skin and pulling the skin up tight. The other thing is, is it's a tight fit. So that's going to make sure that that skin doesn't shift at all while I'm drilling. Now let's do another hole. If I drill another hole, okay, and uh, hopefully you can see that, this hole is that way a little bit. And again, I've only just started to drill, right? I haven't made it down all the way to the bottom of the flute. I'm only still at the top. So what I can do if I want to bring that hole back this direction is I can put it on, make sure I'm nice and square, got my drill where it should be, get my tag out of the way here so it's not sitting in the shot here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull, keeping everything square, but very gently I'm going to pull the drill this way while I'm giving it a little spin. Okay, and so you know, you can sort of see if I was flexing the drill bit, but what I want to do is just gently pull this over. Now you got to be really careful because if you pull too hard, it will jump out of the hole and run across the, the material and leave you a nice trail of cut marks and we don't want to do that. So what we want to do, whoop, see right there, I just pulled a little bit too hard. There we go. Now I've walked it just ever so gently across, but I'm still not all the way in as far as the depth of the flute. So I've more or less corrected to where I want to be. Again, don't feel like you have to just go for it. I always like to kind of work, work my way into the hole so that I know exactly where we're going. And so that started off way to that side. It ended up nice and square. So again, I'm going to put a Cleco in there. Okay. And so I'm just going to quickly rip off a couple more holes here. Okay. Okay. And we'll put one on this side here. The nice thing about the, uh, the small drill bit is if it's not absolutely perfectly centered, if I was to bring that up to the next size, I can put a little bit of pressure on the next size up drill and help to kind of rework where the center is. And so I can do it again, if I was to be bringing it up to a larger size, I can correct kind of as we go. So again, what I should be doing is I should be putting my Clecos in. Here's a piece. Uh, that someone else has started. So when I initially start, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill every hole with a number 40 drill bit. That way every hole starts small. I can lock them all with the silver Clecos and then I know that the positioning of the holes is perfect, right? Then what I'll do is I'll want to, because we're going to get you guys to put in different kinds of rivets, different sizes, I'm going to drill the next set of 
row, the next two rows up with a number 30 drill bit, which is going to be for our 1 8 drill or 1 8 holes. And then these guys here, I could go directly to a number 21 and drill these guys up to 21. That way I've got room to do practice with the small 332s. I can also practice with the 1 8 and the 532s, putting all of them in. Then what I'd like you to do is exactly what this person's done, is we're going to countersink every other row so that, again, we can put a row of universal 332s, a row of countersink 332s, universal 1.8s, countersink 1.8s, universal 5s, and countersink 5s. Okay? And so that's the goal in laying out this piece of material, right? And so when they did all the initial drilling, this would have totally... Uh, should have Clecos in all the holes. And so again, I should be able to uh, just, even though I've got rivets in here, still not a bad idea to have a handful of Clecos in there to make sure everything remains locked. So I've got my brown or uh, bronze Clecos in the uh, 1 8 holes and I've got my black Clecos in the 532s. Let's put a couple of little uh, 332s in there as well. Uh, okay, whatever, go like that, oops didn't get fully inserted that's better and okay so the next step that I'm going to want to do once I've got everything drilled and then using the appropriate size drill the other holes brought up to the proper size the next thing I want to do is I'm going to countersink like these ones have already been countersunk it's true but I, what I'd like to show you is the process of actually using the microstop countersink now the first thing is normally we would have a whole bunch in different sizings and we would all share them but of course with covid we can't do that so what i'm going to get you to do is i'm going to get each person's going to have one uh, microstop countersink and you've got the extra tips so one tip for each size of rivet okay and so currently in there is a 532 and i can tell because the pilot on this one is really big Okay, I could also look right on the side of the actual cutting tool, the countersink, and you can, I don't know if you can see it, but it says five right there. And so I know, okay, it's definitely for a 532. Okay, and so if I wanted to change this from five, say down to a number or, uh, 30 or a number 40, what I would suggest you do is take the micro stop, put it into your chuck, because that gives you something to hold on to it with. So, okay, make sure that's nice and tight. Then what I want you to do is get a smallish punch and notice there's this hole in the side of the countersink. What that's designed for is so that we can actually get a tool in there and we can break it loose from the threaded base that's there. Okay, and so I would spin this out. Okay, there we go, that's out. And if I wanted, let's say, well, I'm going to do, let's do one, oh no, let's do 332 because those ones haven't been done. And I'm just going to spin that in. So again, I'm spinning it back into the, uh, the base and you don't have to tighten it. You don't have to use the um, punch to tighten it because as it cuts, it will tighten in there. Okay, the next thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to push the body down and have a look at how much uh, countersink is above the actual base of the shoe here and there is a ton and I don't want that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the body back and I'm going to spin this counterclockwise actually it'd be clockwise if you were looking from your end um, just like a think of it as like a, a nut as we tighten it it drops it in well I'm going the wrong way I want to go out so I'm going to go counterclockwise there we go until I can just see a tiny bit of the countersink protruding past this shoe base. That means I'm only going to take a tiny bit of material away when I countersink it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my countersink into the hole. So I've got the pilot sitting inside the hole. I'm going to hold on to, usually it's nice to have um, some holes in your piece of wood because, but it should be up high enough with the, uh, the countersinks or the Clecos to be able to to give me some space for that pilot to move down. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold the shoe and I'm gonna, with light pressure and light, uh, medium speed, I'm just gonna take and give it a quick little countersink. Okay, 
Actually, that looks pretty nice. So the next thing that I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to get a 332 countersunk rivet, which I've got there, and I'm going to put it in the hole. Okay. Oh my gosh. Nice. That's just about perfect. Can you see there's a little, little silver ring around the outside? Uh, that's what we're looking for. So we're looking for it to sit, like we talked about, flush or just a micro hair under flush. And this is actually just a micro hair under flush. That was just a lucky, lucky shot. Um, if it ended up where, uh, I'm gonna spin this up a little bit. I'm gonna countersink the hole next to it. Okay, I'm gonna hold my shoe. Okay, like that. And when I put my rivet in the hole, Oh, I can feel that already with my finger just running it across. If I take my nail and try and drag it across, well, my nail catches on it. So that would be too high. And if it's too high, what we want to do, again, is release the base and spin this in, or clockwise from that view, in a little bit. And if I go in, it's going to pull the shoe down a little farther and expose a little bit more of the countersink, allowing me to set the depth. Okay, so now we're going to go back and... Okay, like that. Okay, and really the only way to, to properly to make sure this is properly set is by dropping a rivet in the hole. Wow, that is super close. In fact, that would probably be more than adequate. Um, but just for fun, I'm going to go. I'm going to go in one, two more little serrations, just a little micro bit. Bring it down maybe another thousandths or two thousandths of an inch. Okay, like that. You can see there's just a tiny bit of dust around the outside. And so, oh, that's perfect. Okay, run my finger across it. Yeah, nothing's catching. And so that's the process that we would use for all of the different countersinks, right? So there's uh, one for one eighth. It says, I don't know if you can see that, it says one eighth right on it. And so that tells me that's the right size for these holes. And so again, I would set the depth and then what I would do is get a rivet. Oops, there's a one eighth rivet, drop it in the hole. And again, you can sort of see that little ring around the outside. That's a little, maybe just a tiny touch deep, but still better to be a little deep than to protrude. And so that's a nice, that's a nice looking rivet. Let's see where that one is. That one's even a little deeper, so probably it, they adjusted it up a little bit just to get a little bit less depth. But again, not bad at all. Don't have your rivets proud. Um, really a bad idea. So we want to start by accurately drilling using the correct size, and again, number 40 to start with, and then bring them up to size. And then for the appropriate rivets, so one row of countersink, one row universal, um, we're going to countersink the row making sure that the rivets end up perfect. And then what we're ready to do is we're ready to start riveting. And so the next video, I'll show you the basics of riveting. Okay. Hopefully that's helpful.